totally believe you're here by divine appointment. I totally believe that the events that have lined all of us up to be here right now are completely synchronistic. Um, I'm a therapist, and I've trained a lot with Carl Yaw. He does. Um, he was a psychologist years ago, and one of the things he said: if you're excited about something, you have more synchronicity. So when you notice, if you notice things in your life that you're excited about, you'll find that they start coming together and they start flowing together a lot faster and a lot easier. Um, he even did a card game. He had these people put their cards together, and they got more cards than the cards they won because they were excited about it. So that energy of excitement is what brings so much synchronicity like we're in the flow. So we're connected. Joy is about connection. I've been doing a lot of research. I'm re writing a book called Raising Your Joy IQ. And in my research, what I'm finding is that a pure heart creates joy. Mm -hmm. So your heart being pure, forgiveness, letting all the emotional crap fall off, the baggage, all that stuff that Sundar just guided you to do just to be in here, to be like, oh, letting your day go. Having a strong mind brings joy. If we're thinking those positive thoughts, because when we're thinking the crappy ones, we don't feel that great. Right? And we can observe them, we can do the mindfulness, and that's great too. We can observe them in our present moment, and that brings joy. That's exciting. So we're happy that you're here, because we're going to be talking a lot about joy. We're going to be doing some experiential, really cool exercises and meditations that will help clear out anything that you are carrying around kind of gets in the way of your joy. So I want to talk about joy a little bit more. One of the things I was sitting out, um, if we, probably most of you have had some experiences with death in your life. And when people die, it brings you into the moment really strongly. And so I went through the death of my father a couple years ago, and I was with him all along the way. At the very end, you could feel the joy and the love kind of pouring out of him in a way that I hadn't experienced before. And so you, I always felt like, if you want to call it his soul, his soul joy was kind of coming up and coming up. He could have cared less about football. He always watched football games. He could have cared less about his stuff. He was just present. And I was like, whoa, who's this dude? You know, it was like really, really cool. And so as he passed on, you could feel him leaving. And I sat out and was talking to him one night out on my porch. And I looked up at a star. I was just talking to him. I was like, you know, it reminds me of Disneyland, you know, like, when you wish upon a star. <laughs> and I was talking to him, and I said, you know, how are you doing, and what's going on with your dad? And um, I heard, joy is beyond your story, he said. Joy is beyond your story. So I want you to look at each of, each, each of yourself, look at the person next to you, and I want you to say their name. Does everybody have a name tag? <laughs> Good. And I want you to say, so I'm going to do one, okay? I'm going to say, you say this to the person, you say, Liz, joy is beyond your story. Okay? So say that to someone next to you. And we know joy is beyond our story. I mean, we have our story, we have the things that happen to us, and all the things we have to go through every day, and all the story we could write down if we wrote our story down, right? And so our story is important. And there's something that's this soul joy that's way beyond our story. It comes up even in the hardest times. It comes up even in the best of times. It comes up, it doesn't matter times, right? It bubbles up out of the surface, and we don't even know where the heck it comes from sometimes. And it's there. It's palpable. It's there for us. And so one of the reasons I got so excited about joy, <clears throat> I used to not be very joyful at all. <laughs> you know, I grew up with a history of all kind of crap. You know, addictions, abuse in my family, sexual abuse, all these horrible things going on. And I was scared. I was so scared, scared of the world. And what happens when we're scared, and you guys may have experienced this before, is all this back here, we fight, we flight, we freeze. Fight, we fight, something, you know, we're, we're in this trauma place. And it's hard to feel the joy. It's hard to go out joyful when you're in a joyful place. Simple things are so joyful, like Lars pants. Oh my God, I love those pants. You know, things like that. You get so excited, right? When you have like, joy in you and you're not in that scared place or shut down place, right? Little things get you so pumped. Pleasure in the simple. There's joy there. And then, what was the question? You're going on about joy and the brain. Thank you. So then, the brain, the back of the brain. So then, what they show is meditation brings all the focus up here. Or things like that. When we do these things that bring us into the present moment, 
we can all be feeling the good things while we're applying our brain. And then our heart opens more. And sometimes if we're not feeling joy, our hearts just shut down about something, right? We just need, we're just in protection mode. That's my husband. He lives with me all the time, poor guy. You know, like, he knows when I'm in my protection mode and when I'm not. It's very clear, right? I'm telling you. <laughs> He's been traveling too long. I can live without you. You know, whatever. <laughs> He's been home for a while. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's really interesting how we do, right? We go through these cycles. And so when our heart just blows open, it's so beautiful. So tonight we're going to move into that energy. We're going to move into that space. And, oh, I was telling you a little bit about that. So I got into meditation. So how this trauma, all this fear, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't drive. I was like, I've got to do something. I'm really in bad shape. So I got a referral. They said, you should go to a psychiatrist. You know, you can't sleep. It's probably a good idea. So I went to this doctor, and I was in college at the time. And he said, you've got panic disorder, you've got PTSD, you've got depression. And I said, well, um, what do I do? He said, take these medications. <laughs> and I said, thank you, I'll take anything. So I started taking this medicine. I'm so grateful for that medicine. And I'm by no means making fun of medicine, because medicine saved me. It was manna from heaven, right? And so I, I can sleep again eat again, can drive again. This was like, woo, yeah. So then I got really brave. I was like, I think I'm going to try to get off this medicine. Okay. Let's see what happens. I'm going to learn to meditate instead of medicate. <laughs> you can do both. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Actually, studies show, when I train in meditation, that it doesn't matter if you have medication in your system or not. Meditation is just as effective, if not more so. So it, medication does not affect meditation in any way, but I'll so I went to the therapist, come on in and join us. <laughs> come on in, great. Um, I went to the therapist and she said, okay, here's a candle, stare at it for 20 minutes. I said, okay. And she said, I'll be back in 20 minutes. And left me. I'm like, what the heck? Who is this lady? And this is what she's getting paid for? She leaves, she comes back, she says, how was it? How'd you do? I'm like, I don't know, I've never done this before. So I'm staring at the candle, she said, go home and do that, you'll be fine, $65. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. So I'm like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever done. Don't see me. So I go home. I start staring at this fucking candle. I mean, literally, religiously, for days, staring at a candle, staring at a candle, staring at a candle, staring at a candle. So one day I thought, I'm going to get off this mess. So I stopped taking my medicine. Don't, I'm not giving you any therapeutic advice, by, by the way. Um, and I sat down, and all these feelings started coming back. Panic, sadness, depression. And I was like, if there's anybody out there, please help me. I don't want to feel this anymore. I screamed it. And you know what happened? I had a wave of joy and love come down over me. It was like, have you seen those pictures when you see the light coming down somebody? And they're like, ah. You know? <laughs> it felt that way, like a tsunami of energy coming through my body. Completely changed me. And on that day, I didn't have to take one pill again, and I didn't have a panic attack again, and I never had that level of depression again. So there's something there for all of us. So if I if it can happen to me, it can happen to anybody. That was a really good job. So I wanted to share that with you because whatever is going on tonight. Anything could be some little fluffy bump, some bump in your life, right? Could be some major thing you're going through. It doesn't matter. Whatever's going on, any of these processes we go through, you can let that go in those processes, okay? You can walk out of here with your inner spring clean. You can just right out the door, okay? And walk out of here feeling that release. It takes one moment to have a miracle. One moment. That's all it takes. I'm really glad you're here. All right, have some joy. Thank you.